500 years ago, the Lord commenced a glorious work known to us as the Protestant Reformation. The Lord used this man, Martin Luther, born in Germany, 1483, and at the age of 33, on the 31st of October, 1517, he nailed his 95 theses to the door of Wittenberg Castle Church. That event, historians mark to be the commencement of the Protestant Reformation, and that Reformation would go on to redirect the course of human history. It would go on to rediscover the theology of salvation through Jesus Christ alone, and it would go on to affect how we live and how we worship God to this very day. Uh, Luther in 1505 came to a defining moment in his life where he left the study of law in the university in Erfurt and went into the monastery in the same city. He thought by this means I will get right with God, near to the Lord, and he found uh, after many years in that monastery that he was rather disenchanted and disillusioned. He did come to the light of the gospel uh, when he started to lecture in the university in Wittenberg and he came across Romans 1.17. The just shall live by faith. Those golden letters shed a bright light upon the heart and the mind of Luther at that time. And he said, this in Paul's writings became to me the gate of paradise. I was altogether born again. Armed with gospel light, he then began to dismantle some of the Roman Catholic abuses that were pervading the area around him. In 1517, when Tetzel came to town and he was selling indulgences, payment for your sins, uh, to generate funds to build St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, and also to pay off the bribe that the Archbishop of Mainz had needed, uh, Luther decided it's time for action. So on to the door of the Catholic Church in Wittenberg went his 95 theses. The Pope wasn't particularly enraged by that. He didn't pay much attention even the next couple of years when Luther was debating uh, those in the highest echelons of the Roman Catholic establishment. But in 1520, when Luther penned three crucial documents, including one which called upon the electors and princes of Germany to get in and purge a corrupt church, it was at that point the Pope decided enough is enough, this man is trouble, and he issued a bull of excommunication against Luther, a bull that Luther promptly burned in a fire outside the city gate at Wittenberg. The Pope wasn't content with that. He decided he's put out of the church, we need to do something in the state. And so the Pope leaned upon the young 19-year-old uh, Emperor of Germany, uh, Charles V, and he told him, you need to do something effective against this runaway monk. So Luther was brought before the trial of Worms uh, in 1521, uh, condemned, and he left that diet of Worms as a condemned man, a dead man walking. But while the Pope was saying death to Luther and the Emperor was effectively saying the same, the Word of God was saying something very different. Luther's favourite psalm, 118, the verse 17 of that psalm was telling him, I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. That happened because in the intervening months and in the years that were shortly to follow, Luther translated the Bible, first the New Testament out of Greek into German, and then finally all of the Bible by 1534. And that caused the light to really spread and illuminate Germany and far beyond. Speaking humbly of the influence of his life and ministry, Martin Luther once said, I simply taught, preached and wrote God's word. Otherwise I did nothing. And while I slept, the word so greatly weakened the papacy that no prince or emperor ever inflicted such losses upon it. I did nothing. The Word did everything. In a very real and important sense, the essence of the theology of the Reformation is that God and His three persons, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, eternally decreed and covenanted together to redeem men from their sins. On that basis, the Reformers therefore set forth the great truth that man left to himself 
will never be saved without divine intervention. They set this forth because they saw from the Word of God that man is stricken with total inability and therefore is incapable of performing sufficient works in order to gain merit with God, in order to possess eternal life. The Reformers took this position theologically in opposition to the error of the Church of Rome. And that error is really at the foundation of everything that Rome teaches, that man has retained some ability to do sufficient works of a spiritual or religious kind in order to gain God's favour. And the Reformers seeing this then set about the great work of presenting to the people of their day the message of the Gospel of Jesus Christ. And therefore we can think of the words of the Apostle Paul where he says that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. And so the theology of the Reformers and the theology of the Reformation is a God-centered and a Christ-centered theology. As Martin Luther once famously said, a gospel that does not deal with the issues of the day is not a gospel at all. Martin Luther's influence impacts every member of our society. Secular historians recognize that it was his influence that has changed politically the world before Luther's time was known as the Dark Ages, even the founding of the United States of America, what we call Western democracy. Free nation states are a direct result of the Reformation. Educationally, one saying puts it this way, with Romanism goes the great ornate cathedral, but with Protestantism goes libraries, schools and universities. Under Luther, Germany became known as the land of schools and universities. Socially, what a great change he made. Many historians say modern life would be unthinkable without Martin Luther, the man who changed the world. Marriage, the status of women, are directly related to Martin Luther's influence. What's known as the Protestant work ethic. The great teaching of the sovereignty of God, in other words, that all vocations in life can be lived to the glory of God. A barber, a farmer, whatever the occupation, you can live it to the glory of God as much as any monk or priest, as Luther put it in his day. But as Christians, we remember the great impact spiritually. The Reformation led to light after the Dark Ages. Before Luther, Scripture was hidden from the people. It Luther was 20 years of age before he even saw a New Testament. He translated it, of course, into German. Today we have the scripture and we can read it. People were put to death for reading the Bible or even listening to it being read in those days. And because we have the authority of scripture, we can learn about the atonement of the Saviour. And thank God for the wonderful spiritual liberty that we enjoy today through the actions of Martin Luther and other reformers. Although we give thanks to God for what he did in the 1500s, we don't want to be the generation who only remember what God did. We want to experience the Lord moving again. The scriptures remind us, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin 